You know what I really like? What? I really like I really like beer. You really like beer? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what else I really like? Uh, when I start recording? Well, that too, but, <laughs> but besides that, I also really, really like playing cards. You like playing cards? I like playing cards. But you know what's really, really, really awesome? What's that? When you can play cards with a game that's about beer. No. It's like combining my, all my favorite things. It's not going to happen. Oh, but it has. Yeah. Hip Hops, the beer card game. Yeah. It is so cool, man. It's like a, a Trump's style card game that's super fun to play with your friends at parties. It's got beautiful, beautiful professionally made cards that highlights different beers. You use the different stats, like the alcohol level and the, the type of hops. It's so fun. It's such a great game. You should check it out by going to hiphops.cards and use code ritual misery at checkout and you'll get free shipping free worldwide. shipping worldwide worldwide free worldwide shipping yep on a great card game about beer hell yeah nice Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 8, beta 67 for Friday the 5th of February 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff, whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and I'm back to screwing it up and lying about my date. That's what I do. How you doing, Kent? Uh, well, I'm pretty good, but I'm actually Steve. You're Steve? My name is, yeah, my, my name is Steve. Now. Your, your name is Steve? Yes. Why, why, is, why Steve? Because Jace said that my name is Steve, and he wants me to be Steve, so I'm Steve. Okay. Well, well, hey, Steve. <laughs> Steve Kent guy thing. Well, ho- hopefully our guest tonight is someone who knows his damn name. <laughs> All right, tonight we have with us Jeff King of All Us Geeks and uh, a bunch of other stuff, man. He's a, he's a diehard gamer, an actual like real-life gamer guy, man. He likes games. What's up, Jeff? Uh, I'm sorry. My name is Julio Sanchez Hueves. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can't get these names. Man, am I the out. only one that didn't get a new name today? This is bullshit. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we're all jealous of you because you have like 600 names that you go by. Uh, well, you know, I, okay. So, so today I'm gonna go by. Um, no, I'm, I'm just Amos. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so the story on on my new name went to California last weekend. Uh huh. A uh-huh. uh, little little family trip, and. Uh, Stephanie's five-year-old nephew couldn't remember my name, and you know, oh, my name's Kent. You know, oh, okay, okay. And then later on, he was like, "Hey, Steve, <laughs> Who, who's Steve?" He goes, "You're Steve." I'm like, uh, no, I'm Kent. No, you're Steve. <laughs> okay. And then like later on, he said it again, and he was corrected by like his dad or his grandma or somebody, and he's like, "No, it's Steve." Why? Why? Why are you? Why are you calling him Steve? Because I wanted to name him, and his name is Steve. You are now Scuba Steve. No. That's what's <laughs> now up. Now I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, and and uh, uh, Julio uh, uh, eggs or something like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing tonight? <laughs> I, I'm doing good. You know what? If, if it's too much to handle, you can go back to calling me Jeff. Uh, uh. I, I will answer to that for this evening. Th- thank you for acquiescing to my <laughs> my lowered mental state. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> uh, I'm doing good though. Um, yeah, it, I'm glad I got the uh, invite. It's uh, you know uh, we got to talk previously, so this is kind of fun to be on this side too. So yeah, the the, the show where I actually have someone to bounce my ideas off of without uh, you know just randomly stumbling through a bunch of questions. <laughs> I I don't know. We there might have been some rambling and stumbling. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe Jeff not was, on your end, but it was probably on my end. Uh, I think I think both of us did. So Jeff was a guest on Amos's other show, Undaunted, mm-hmm. where he talks to fellow podcasters, just basically about the the art of podcasting. And I really really enjoyed that show. If if you guys haven't checked out Undaunted yet, you really need to do that. It's on iTunes, just like just like everything else. Yeah. So, uh, so speaking of iTunes, let's get to my uh, my geeky thing of the week. Okay, he's gonna jump right into it. Yep, what you got? I finally figured out how to get a video feed that doesn't doesn't uh, fight the audio feed for Ritual Misery podcast. And so now there is an actual no shit video podcast feed. Oh yes, that's right. Yes, <laughs> that is so cool. 
So not only not only is there a video podcast feed, but there's also a master feed now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where all of Ritual Misery shows are all aggregated into to one stream. Yeah, that's it's what I awesome. do. I, I I hack uh, iTunes on my off time. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everybody needs a hobby. Actually, it was more uh, it was more messing with the settings in WordPress and finally figuring out how to get it done without double posting and shit like that, which is remarkably simple once I actually figured it out. <laughs> like, stupid simple. So, um, it's probably more a testament to my lack of uh, experience with, with, uh, with WordPress than anything else. But yes, there are now a uh, master stream for everything Original Wizard puts out. So... And that includes the video stream. So we have only one video episode up so far. Um, I, I don't see any point in going back and redoing all the others. Yeah, so we'll just continue from here. Yeah, you can just go to YouTube if you really want to see the videos <laughs> from the previous shows. Yeah, th- and I'll still post them to YouTube as well. That's that, that's not going to go away. Because we've got a couple right, of people right. that watch religiously on there. So by all means, I'm, I'm not going to stop that. Yeah, so something that I've talked about on here several times is the the new well newish star wars cartoon rebels Mm -hmm. and uh i get it on a season pass on amazon well last week i was waiting for my new episode and then i was like what the hell it hasn't posted yet i'm pretty sure it aired what what the hell's going on well then i saw somebody and i tried to find the tweet i'm pretty sure it was on twitter somebody had said that what the hell uh uh, Amazon is screwing me over with my my Rebels season pass or something like that. It's like what the fuck? What the fuck? So I went in and, and investigated, and it turns out it's not just Amazon. It was Disney did this where they decided at some point to split the season into two different volumes. So if you want to see the second half of the season, you, you got to pay your twenty bucks again for a new season pass. It's like this is fucking bullshit so i i went on the um on the the page for it, the amazon page for it mm-hmm. and right now season three well they're calling it season three when it's still actually season two <laughs> but rebels season three is is pulling a one star rating right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like 95 percent or something like that of the of the um uh, uh whatever comments on there are people bitching about this very thing Yep. and i was like this is bullshit so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bitch to uh, to customer support. So I pulled up a chat support window and bitched about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, that's weird. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is credit your account, 19.99, and you need to go ahead and just go ahead and purchase the se- the the next season, and everything will be good. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> So yeah, that uh, what the fuck. Okay. So if, if anybody in chat realm watching right now, if that was you that that posted on Twitter, like check this out, man. I I'm posting the link if it does it properly. I think that's it. Yeah. You, you, you Click the, on that link. It the, is a screenshot of my chat. If yeah, if you're if you're watching the video version, uh, you're actually seeing the screenshot up on the screen right now. So yeah. So amazing. I mean, what a what a dumb thing that they did and i was oh man i was pissed about it but what a cool thing that amazon customer support did so if if anyone else is having an issue like this just jump on the, it took me less than five minutes and i had my season restored okay, okay. The, the reason i'm laughing so much on this kent <laughs> is if you uh if, if you were more involved in the geekosphere on the internet you would know that this is a common complaint and this resolution had come out months ago they just never fixed it. <laughs> really? Well, this just happened with Rebels. This is brand new. They did the last same, week was the they, they did the same thing when it came out and they announced it, and people were were like, "Well, what the hell? Why am I? Why can't I see the second half of the fir- of the second season when I've already paid for the first half?" And blah 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 blah. It, it happened then. It was great. Oh, really? Yeah, they covered it on Court Killers and everything. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. Well, hey, all right. So I'm late to the game, but. Anyway, there you go. And RM underscore Del Noche. <laughs> yeah, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I'm current on everything, I guess. Oh, so man. what you're saying is I got to follow that Twitter feed to get the latest and greatest news. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, from, yeah. from six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, well. It's very, it's very topical. <laughs> that, that, it's very that's topical. That's all right. 
I sometimes miss things. So if you can catch me up six months later, it will be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, Maybe I mean, I have, time travel. Uh, so, so you right. have, I have you a have, nice bookend to all my news. <laughs> you you yeah. have a, you have three three areas of the spectrum. You have <laughs> so no. Amos was late to the Steve Harvey game. No, that video had just come out. Thank you very much, Movie Man Lucas. So, um, <laughs> the uh, the you have three three spectrums of, of the news game. You have CNN that's pumping out stuff all the time. The Verge, who's pumping out stuff multiple times on the same stream, like you everything they put out, they put out three times. Then you have Kent, which is just hey. You know, in case you missed it six months ago, <laughs> yeah. there's this. <laughs> I, I have a time traveling Twitter stream. Oh, so, but it only goes to the past. <laughs> it's, also, it's also called Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeff, what is the uh, the geekiest thing you did all week? Oh, all week, huh? Yeah. Um. Well, I... I I had this I I posted this kind of to my Facebook the other day my personal Facebook but it was uh I, I basically said I I can never say that my life is boring so while I was at work troubleshooting some stuff at work um in the span of less than an hour I had a conversation about um uh game reviews and how to how to get into that uh somebody hit me up for some advice on game design uh, and then I had somebody uh, hit me up about some VO work, uh, voiceover work. And then I had somebody hit me up about Kickstarter consulting uh, and then went into somebody asking me how to start their podcast. And that was all within a span of about two hours while I was troubleshooting stuff at work. <laughs> wow. Multi-resource. I told I told you Jeff was was definitely in the Geeks Club. Like he, he knows all the things. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was funny. It was just like. Everything I do was hit uh, like like somebody was testing me. Do you really do this? For the next hour, we're going to see if you actually do this stuff. So everything was like, how about this? I'm like, yeah, I, I, I do that. How about this? So, wow. so there, there's that. I, you know, I've uh, that that was probably my uh, my biggest I, I don't want to say accomplishment because that was like not an accomplishment at all. But it was an interesting day. <laughs> Nice. So, so you and uh, you and Kent have something in common, and that is a devout love for Patreon, or not for Patreon, for uh, for Kickstarter. And I'm just screwing over everything today. Yes. <laughs> so well, I do have a devout love of Patreon because we've got some awesome supporters. But you're right, I I have a very, uh, very invested interest in Kickstarter at this point. Have you kickstarted a project? Uh, have like have I personally? Right, right. Uh, done something? No, I have not. Um, mostly because like we we thought about doing it for all us geeks. Uh, the problem with that for us is everything that I usually do has a charity slant to it, and that's against Kickstarter policy. So I couldn't uh, do something. So we usually do our own internal pledge drive. Um, now I've I've helped some projects, and I like I I actually do Kickstarter consulting. Uh, I just kind of actually today uh, solidified another one that I'm going to help. Uh, they want me to be more hands-on. So um, it's going to be their account and stuff, but I'm going to help them run it. Uh, but I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I do a lot of, I, I a lot of what I do is actually uh, there's a lot of people that don't know the marketing side of it that, you know, too many people that still think, Oh, I can just put my page up on Kickstarter and people will come. If if I build it, they will come. <laughs> right. And that is the worst thing you can ever do. Uh, except right, play right. baseball. Um, so Kent's on the opposite <laughs> end of that. Uh, have I told you lately how much I hate baseball? So Kent's on the opposite end of that. He uh, he has not uh, taken part in the development of a Kickstarter. Where he has actually kickstarted several projects. Hmm. He's back. You backed up. Oh, back. Okay. Ba yeah. I was like, wait, what? When did <laughs> hey, I do these yeah, things? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Terminology got yeah. a little <laughs> Words are hard. Um, I don't. I don't. Yeah, no, I, just, I don't I, English I really, today. <laughs> I really just. I love the idea of crowdsourcing and crowdfunding and just. It, it is just. I don't know. It just. It just fascinates me. How. I want, almost said easy because it's not easy to to get the backers, but not, if you get anymore. the right, if you put it, if you put the project in front of the right people, they want to give you money. I guess that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. If you find the people, they will give you the money, and that's just that's just amazing to me. I love it. And there's yeah, so no, many I, cool. 
Good, good. No, I was just saying, I do back a lot of projects, and I have backed a lot of projects. And one of the other things through All Us Geeks is that we do for the tabletop gaming side is we actually review games. So a lot of times our, our videos and stuff will show up on Kickstarter pages for tabletop games that are looking for funding. See, we in need fact, to. I got one. I got one. I got to record this weekend yet. So we need to. We need to get uh, Francis in touch with Jeff and uh, get a get a good review of uh, of hip hops on there. Ah, true. Yeah, it's a good point. Good I know point. it's uh, are these connections. Like I can't English, but I can make connections. Yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Here now, yeah. since you were showing stuff earlier, and since I'm on my more portable cam, I'll give everybody dizziness or whatever. But this is kind of that. That's uh, that's my game collection there. Oh wow. <laughs> That's, oh wow! That's part that's part of my game collection. So that's what it is to be a reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I now I bought a lot of that stuff, but there's a lot of stuff on the shelf too that was sent to me to review. So that's amazing. Now I have a question about reviewing. Say a company sends you a a product and you just think it's absolute shit. Like mm -hmm. you start playing it, and you're like, this there's this it's unplayable. The the mechanics are broken, or it's just not fun. How do you handle that? <laughs> Well, um, it, it depends. De okay, so there are some reviewers that will say, I will not review anything I don't like. Uh, and I have a friend that does that. He, he uh, will actually send the game back and just say, I'm not going to review this. I don't like it. Uh, what we tend to do is we'll still review it because um, we say on our site that, you know, if you send us something, uh, we're going to give an honest review of it. Uh, but the thing that we try to do, um, and some other people don't, and it, it, it bothers me a little bit, but I always say, you know, everybody has their piece of the internet. You do with your piece of the internet, whatever you want to do. On our piece of the internet, <laughs> our philosophy is to remember that there's a person behind the game. So the only time I haven't, well, one of the times I haven't reviewed something right away, uh, but I reviewed it later was I got a hold of somebody and said, you know what, I need you to get somebody in and look at this rule book because I've gone through your rule book like four or five times. I still don't understand how to set up your game. So the rule book needs help. I'm not reviewing this because I can't even set it up. Uh, and they did. They got some help, and they got some really good help, and the game was really good. I just needed to understand how to play it. Uh, but, I mean, so the gist of it is we will give honest feedback. We will critique and criticize a game but it's constructive criticism because again we always try to remember there's somebody somebody put their heart into it so we'll do things like maybe offer some suggestions or also do like a follow-up email hey this is what we were talking about here's the different things that maybe you can improve on and i still like one one of my friends my my good friends he's and that that always that always concerns me when a friend sends me a game but there was something we pointed out with his game we love the game but we said, this is really an issue for us. And he just kind of went, yeah, 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 whatever. That's Jeff and Jordan don't know what they're talking about. Until he was playing his own game with somebody and made the exact same mistake because of the exact same thing we pointed out. And he's like, oh, that's what Jeff was talking about. <laughs> and he changed it before it went live. So Now, Kent, didn't we have a – we had a teacher in uh, like seventh grade or something like that that was like trying to make his own game or something. That was, of course, yes, that was back in the, like he, the early '90s. But I, I want to say it was our eighth grade biology teacher. I don't know. Had a, a, he had some sort of like like a financial board game, like Monopoly ish, but not Monopoly. Yeah, he he like <laughs> mortgaged his house like twice to help fund it. And... Yeah, yeah. He well, so he spent a lot of money designing that game and and putting it together. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. I mean, back uh, back in like pre 1998, uh, anything kind of earlier than that there wasn't really a lot of like print on demand sites or anything so if you were developing a passion project you were shelling out like thousands of dollars if you wanted to try to do this yourself where now you've got things like print and play productions and the game crafter and places that'll do a one off or two off where you don't have to invest thousands to get a whole print run and you can still get a copy of your game but back then there were so many people that didn't understand what they were getting into. They had passion projects. They spent thousands of dollars and ended up with a garage full of games that they couldn't get rid of and like $16,000 in the hole. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. I think he had his on sale at like one of the local drugstores or something like that, and that was it. I think he'd sold like four copies of it. <laughs> yeah, that's just the thing. I mean, it, you know, you got to think about that too. Back then, you're like, you couldn't dump it on eBay. You couldn't do any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It was just like you had to physically get rid of all these copies that you could no longer park your car in your garage because of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Did you ever play so, the game that he had developed? Because I know he had like two of them in his classroom. Yeah, and I, I think I did, but I I honestly don't remember much about it. I think it was one of those things where like there was five minutes left of class, we got it set up and played like each of us played one turn or something mm-hmm. like that, and the bell rang. Yeah, so he, he was on he enough. was on B team or whatever, so I, n- I didn't actually have him as a as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jeff, you mentioned the Game Crafter. Can you tell us mm-hmm. what that is? Yeah, well, it, it's uh, kind of I was kind of getting into is it's actually a print on demand company. So what that means is they have an online web presence that you can basically go to thegamecrafter.com and you can upload your art, you can pick out various pieces. Basically, you can make your game that you've been developing on the site. So they have templates for what the sizes of the different, you know, they have different cards you can have. They have mats, boards, you can do, you know, a game board. Uh, you, all these different printable components that you can put into a game. And then they have all the pieces that you'd be used to. So like cubes and pawns and all that good stuff. And and basically you can create either as a one-off for yourself so you have a nice prototype that you can use. Um, or like I get a lot of review copies that people put it there before it goes to Kickstarter. So it's an easy way for to get you know early copies without spending a ton of money um, and then, you know, they raise their money for the long print run on on Kickstarter. Um, but basically all they need to do is, I mean, you don't have to order any number. You can, you know, it's one, it's a one at a time. And then you can also sell them on there. And if you sell them on the site itself, they do a 70-30 split uh, for the profit. So 70% goes to the designer and 30% goes to the to the site. So it's an, it's just a nice way, like I said, it, instead of doing those long print runs, uh, for your own passion project and having them sitting in your garage, you can put it on the site, and as people order them, they get made. Yeah, that so, is that is super super cool. I love that's another thing I really love is the print on demand type stuff. And uh, the game crafter just keeps getting better and better. I've uh, and, the, and the reason why earlier I picked 1998 and earlier is because that's about how long I've been. Uh, involved i think with with those guys uh no maybe so they, they've they been around for quite a while and they just keep improving improving to the, they're getting to the point um right now where th- from where they started to where they are now you can actually produce a game on their site um and and depending on what you pick and how you how you produce it you can hold it up to a game in a game store and not tell which one is which Nice. So yeah, they're they're constantly improving their quality over there. So for pricing, like if I was gonna order a game that's let's let's say roughly equivalent to Monopoly, because everybody knows what Monopoly is. <laughs> if I was to, to, I I guess design, upload, and and print and order a copy of Monopoly, what what would that probably run me? Um. Well, it, Monopoly has a ton of components in it so uh, basically um most games if, if you're looking at just because if you if you purchase your own game you always buy it at cost um and you can put them for sale and add profit onto it if you want so you know a card game might cost you the three four bucks something like monopoly might be in the 30-ish range um okay okay to get it printed so i mean it is a it can be slightly more expensive than well, you know, doing long print runs, you're going to get a lower cost per unit, but you have to, I think the, some of the lower ones are like a thousand, 1500 copies you have to buy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's on the low side, but I Um, saved 32 cents. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, You know, there, and there are some places like if you're just a card game, there are a couple places that'll let you get away with 500. Um, but again, the game crafter, so your, your price per unit might be higher than going for a long print run, but you only have to buy one. <laughs> right. Right. Yep. That is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because like my son, for example, he's pretty much his whole life, he's made his own games and, you know, he always does it with paper or whatever. 
and this is something that I've, I'm encouraging him, you know, put it up there. Even if he doesn't want to sell it, if he just wants a like a genuinely printed copy of his game, that would just be awesome. Just to have a shelf full of games that you designed. Yep, it's it's great for that. And and again, I mean, the way he's starting is perfect. I mean, that's how we all start designing. You know, we we don't immediately go over to the game crafter throw everything up and then go, you know what? None of this works. We need to reprint the whole thing. Although sometimes like, especially when you first discover the game crafter, I think all of us have that first round where we order crap and then we go, I need to change that. And now I got to put in another 20, 20 bucks because I need new components for whatever I changed. Uh, because it, it is, it's so super cool to find something where you can get that physical product in your hand. Right. I've, I've mm. spent so much time designing this and here I have a physical copy, but I need to change it right away. <laughs> so, but we all usually start with like index cards. I got a whole like couple tubs over here of prototype components that when I've got ideas that I'm trying to work out, I go there first. And then when I think I've got something solid, I'll put it up on the game crafter. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so this week there, there's a couple things that happened. First of all, I screwed up the date that Jeff was supposed to be on. He's actually scheduled to be on <laughs> next week. Uh, who's nice enough to to acquiesce to our to a, our our empty guest slot this week? So um, there's that, and the other thing that that uh, happened is a result of having a weekly show. So last Friday, there was a big hubbub about the Fine Brothers, about them mm-hmm. trademarking their React videos, the word React, and and so on and so forth. And I started doing research immediately. It was instantly, uh, you know, I- interested in what was going on, especially with the Ritual Misery name and everything else, you know. I mean, it, it personally vested in the outcome of this. Well, what happens? So Monday comes along, and they covered a little bit on DTNS, which is actually where I heard about it uh, on Friday. We talked about it on, on my Saturday, you know, which would be, I guess, so DTNS would have been your Thursday episode, whatever. Um we talked about it a little bit last week, and then Monday comes around, Cord Killers comes on, and Cord Killers blows it out. They talk about it for like 20 minutes. It's completely explained, and other than opinion pieces, I don't know what else we can really add to it that we're not just rehashing an excellent episode of Cord Killers. So, you know, as a uh, victim of a weekly show, we are way off on this one. And uh, yeah. I know you guys read it and you guys kept up with it because I'm sure it interested both of you in different ways. Um, is there anything that you would like to add to the whole Fine Brothers thing before we just move on? Because we really, I don't, I don't want to rehash what the experts have already done. So, I just, I, I just think the whole damn thing is funny because they they came out thinking that they had this brilliant idea and we're all gonna be happy together and make money together, and instantly they got trashed by everyone. Then they came out with another video that oh no 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 guys you don't you, you don't get it this, this is what we're trying to do instantly that one got trashed rinse and repeat and then finally they're like okay press release uh, all right we, give we up. took this down we canceled the whole thing just forget, <laughs> forget about it deleted their videos off YouTube it's gone like it yeah. never happened <laughs> all in the matter of like four days <laughs> what about you Jeff oh. what do you think about the whole charade yeah I it's it's one of those things like when I started thinking about it, it was like what I, I, I didn't understand the thought process to begin with because it's not like I mean, were there really a, a ton of people knocking down their door saying, hey, can I do my own react videos? You know what I mean? Or can I borrow? I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, granted, they've got a following. Right. So but. Just because I license the idea of doing a react vi- a react video uh, take a take part of your franchise that d- doesn't mean I get your following so i I just don't under the whole thought process just kind of had me confused um oh, yeah. and then i just I just found the whole thing funny and then some of the other videos that you guys posted um you know some of the uh parody videos and stuff I thought were just spot on it, it, the whole thing was just what <laughs> so one of, one of my favorite things that i saw out of this was there was someone filming himself watching their youtube channel and their their subscription numbers going down they're sitting there eating popcorn <laughs> <laughs> i lost it <laughs> so <clears throat> okay so, so as as a as a creator 
Um, I understand what they were trying to say. I understand how their delivery was completely off, and it it their delivery ruined whatever prospects they might have had. And and I don't know if they consulted other people, but it just was not handled correctly. Um, that was a horrible focus group. They should fire them if they had a yeah, focus group. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was no like. <laughs> it, was, it was awful. Um, the intent. Okay, so I, I tell you, we'll, we'll wrap this up into the uh, into the Ritual Misery po- uh, podcast. If you want to have the Ritual Misery podcast with the same the the, the same topics of conversation, the same points that you're going to hit, and everything else, uh, and the same music and the same graphics, I will license it to you without without doubt. No problem. I will license it to you. If you want to have some guys talking on the internet about some geeky shit and some random stuff they find on the internet. I uh, I I can't I, like that's that's not <laughs> trademarkable. That that's called a podcast. Yeah. You've already dealt with that. <laughs> exactly. So and and but that dividing line there is where it got screwed up. They did they they should have come out and just explicitly said, hey, we'll, we will put you on our channel. We'll give you the, our, the graphics packages, the 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 audio packages. And you can use the, exactly the same format with the same backgrounds and the same everything, and yep. we'll revenue share with you. That would have been that would have been perfectly fine. Like uh, people would have understood yep. that. Hey, okay. But see, to- yeah, and, and that's the part too. It's it's being on their channel and and kind of piggybacking on what they've already built instead of. I mean, I, I don't even see you know I don't even see the benefit of just give me all the packages and I'll go do it on my own because you're not getting anything out of that, you know, mm-hmm. but it, to actually be on their channel and to be able to utilize what they've already built on in the subscription base that they already had. That's yeah, I agree with you. That's a whole different story. Right. Which is, which is what they should have emphasis or emphasized, yep. but they didn't, yep, yep. they didn't emphasize that they, they spun it off in this totally weird direction. And I, I think, I think it was a great Well, they started threatening their viewers. They said, "If you don't want us to take you down, that's where they fucked up." <laughs> that they turned it negative. That that's it, where they screwed it up. They turned it negative. They threatened their fan base. Yeah, it just they, the whole thing was that's, just handled wrong. I, I don't think yeah. I don't think the intent was bad. <laughs> I think the handling was incorrect. Yeah, so, yeah. a little overreaching maybe, but I don't think it was I just think it was handled completely wrong. So, there's that. Uh, that's probably all the all the conversation we need to have about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we covered it. <laughs> all right, Kent. So, did you? Uh, did you? Either of you guys watch a TED Talk this week? I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Good. No TED Talks. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did not, unless you count me going back and listening to a couple of your other episodes and listen, and watching one of the TED Talks you guys <laughs> talked about previously. <laughs> um, I did, however, uh, I, I watched a little thing that almost qualifies as a TED Talk because it's got some educational, some some opinion, and some uh, life-forwarding value to it. Um, from the Vlogbrothers, why are vegetarians annoying? Now, <laughs> now Kent doesn't like the Vlogbrothers because they, uh, they like to do the smash cut. Oh, Which, now, see, that's that's what kills me. I like them. Like, they, they've got great personalities, and they, they talk about cool shit, and I, I like them, but I can barely stand to watch them because just pff, smash cut. And then we, <laughs> smash cut, and we're ta- now I'm over. Now I'm talking over here. Now I'm over here throughout the entire <laughs> video, and both of them do it. It's like, oh, my God, dude, I can't. I just I can only watch like two of their videos at a time, and then I'm done with them for like a month. And, and, <laughs> and then the, I can watch the, a couple more. The opposite of that is uh, I love it. I think it's great. I I think the it's a it's a visual uh, a visual cue to the change, either the change in topic or the change in in. Uh, uh, no, is a tone. change in what half of the sentence he's in? <laughs> like it's nonstop throughout. The, oh man. Okay, never mind. I'm getting off my soapbox. <laughs> Dude, now, I have a, I have a third side to that where I actually, uh, air quoting, watched uh, this while I was at work and working on something, so it was in the background. So I was more listening than watching. <laughs> See, and and how and what was your experience? Did you mind the smash cuts? Hey, hey, the voice was fine. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 didn't they didn't do massive voice cuts that I could tell while I was listening to it at all. So it was you know great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I'm probably in the minority. They've got a huge following too. So. <laughs> well, yeah, between them and their 15 channels or so. 
and, oh, yeah. and, and, and all of VidCon. I mean, you know, it's just a minor thing in California <laughs> every year, just small. Um, okay. So anyway, why are vegetarians annoying? What, what do you guys think? What, how, what do you think about the content itself? Um, <laughs> it was okay. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I didn't. This, this can be applied to, to just about any group that's not your group. Right. It's. That's actually. I don't what, know. It was like I, a non topic to me. Like, <laughs> it, he was just talking about how I'm going to tell you about this thing that's not really a thing. And then he was done. I guess. Okay. You're, you're, I don't know. I, I love how socially acceptable you are in your own mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jeff? Uh, I, you know, it was it was a, a decent flow, uh, thought flow. Um, but I, I agree. I mean, again, it, it, it really could have been you could switch that out for anything. You could, you know, we could have been talking about in, you know, in my circle, people that still think Monopoly is a cool game. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it really I think the, the funniest thing or the, the thing that stood out the most for me is like, you know, on it is, you know, people can be annoying with their beliefs if they get in your face about it. But I found it more humorous that this guy was continually apologizing for eating meat. It's like I, I'm not apologizing for loving yeah. a good steak. Um, you know, that that's me. I'm now I'm not going to go up to a vegetarian and like rub it in their face or anything. Like, you got to <laughs> eat this. Um, but but at the same time, I'm not going to also tell a vegetarian, you know, you need to you need to put some steak on that. On, on that plate um and, and try to annoy them at the same time so that that was the biggest thing i was like why does this guy keep apologizing for his own need or want to eat meat shut up about that part that that actually kind of started to annoy me so yeah i'm, I'm with jeff on that too. so th this is this video struck struck it with me because i am constantly in a situation where my beliefs or my um standards are outside the norm no. Yeah, yeah. I am I'm I'm that guy that, you know it's it's just it never stops. It never ends that people are talking about something, they want to include me in the conversation. I'm like, I can't I, I can't I You can't. don't want me to you don't want to see me angry. Yeah, it's like this this is not a conversation that I can have in this environment with these people. This this doesn't this is not conducive to anyone's yeah. well being right now. While um, you're wearing rank on your sleeve, especially. It, it, yeah, exactly. Like being in uniform, <laughs> that that's just never. Oh no. So um, so I I liked it in the fact that it, the the basic message. If you if you get past the 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 smash cuts and if you get past the the apologizing for not being a vegetarian, what it really comes down to is is he's saying you know Hank saying chill the fuck out. You know it. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, maybe I can improve in this particular aspect that you think I need to improve on, but it's not going to fucking happen right now. You talking to me right now is not going to make it happen. I'm not going right. to walk away from this conversation, a changed person, chill the <laughs> fuck out. You know, let me yeah. be, let me do me. And I think that was the, the basic message of it. And a three and a half minute video without ever actually saying that, but that's, you know, that's, that's what it comes down to. And I, I, that's what the part that I appreciated. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's kind of what me and Jeff were saying too, with the, you can just apply it to anything, any, mm -hmm. any subject really. And yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you kind of put a bow on it. That was well, well done. <laughs> all right. All right. So we have a couple more topics. One, yeah. So one... I wanted to bring up, uh, Amazon prime, uh, for... <laughs> so, again, I'm going to bring it up because, because you got your money back or I mean, no, 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 no. This was is, that this part is, of the no. deal? Look, we'll give you your money back. We talk about it some yeah. more on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. Actually, I, I, this is for my for my military. Spe brothers speaking of Amazon, if you go to richmisery dot com forward slash support and click on the Amazon link, <laughs> for that matter, yes, um, so. <laughs> you, can, you can buy whatever you want. It yeah. won't cost you a penny more, but it'll it'll give us a couple pennies. Okay, so anyway, Amazon actually did something really cool for all of our military brothers and sisters. Uh, so supposedly, I don't know if this is taking place yet or if it's kind of in the works or even if it's at all locations. But supposedly, all of our overseas U.S. bases on base now will have access to Amazon Prime Video, which they previously weren't able to because it, it registered as the region uh, that you're in. 
right the re yeah re region coding basically yeah. um but now th they the ips are going to be recognized as a u.s territory for amazon prime video which is i think that's that's super awesome because that's one thing that really really sucks about going overseas as much fun as it is and as fascinating as it is to, is to live in another country you're robbed i guess of of your like the things that your comfort like your creature comforts that you're used to in in the states and for a lot of people that's amazon prime or any streaming service fill in the blank and you get overseas and you find out a lot of your stuff just doesn't work so it, it, something like amazon prime you paid 99 dollars a year for that you paid for it already and you get overseas and it's not working th this is uh this is interesting to me in a couple aspects one I've been over here for eight months now, whatever. Um, I've been watching Amazon Prime Video the entire time. Like, I, I, are you I, are you using a VPN? N no, not for that. Oh, yeah. So I've oh. been able to do it the entire okay. time. So I don't know if that's specific. It may be that Korea is already on the list of places that can, you know, that there's no problem with it or whatever. Mm -hmm. My problem comes in when they region code the crap out of Netflix and I can't watch it. Or HBO Now, I couldn't watch Game of Thrones because it, 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 the the buffering was so bad. I had to VPN it, first of all, and that led to the buffering being so bad that I couldn't watch an actual episode. And HBO Now only buffers like 15 seconds at a time. Ooh. So I couldn't just yeah. like pause it, let it queue up like YouTube, and then play right, it. Yeah. You know, Anytime I hit play, I got 15 seconds, and it would stop and wait to buffer again. So I couldn't uh. watch Game of Thrones. I couldn't watch you know all these other shows on HBO that I wanted to catch up on. You know, the Sopranos and all that other stuff because of the region coding. Now, mm -hmm. on the other side of this, Netflix is currently going through and doing this Netflix worldwide thing. But that's going to include region locking every area around the, you know, around the globe. And they're going to try to make it as available as possible. And, of course, all the Netflix shows you can watch except for, uh, well, except for um, House of Cards in France because they already sold those rights off to somebody. <laughs> Idiots. But um, this is one of those things that it. If if you can do this, if they can do this, you know, if Amazon can do this for military bases, why can't Netflix? Why can't HBO? Why can't any yep. other streaming service? Why can't YouTube? So I I can watch the damn adult videos on YouTube, which are adult videos. They're not actual, you know, they're just age locked that I can't unlock right, on right. my YouTube because I don't have a fucking Korean phone number. Like why, you know, why do I have to VPN to watch a fucking video on YouTube when I'm on a military base? Like that shit pisses me off. Um and it was only recently, earlier this year, that they got Xbox and PS uh, PlayStation Network to work uh, around here too. So, like, yeah. fucking fix it, internet, fix it. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. oh, and if if anybody listening owns the internet, <laughs> yes, yeah. damn it, yeah. get on it, <laughs> <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> One last thing to add on to this for the military folks. Amazon, another thing that Amazon is doing is giving their Amazon originals to AFN. So AFN will be able to show pretty much, I guess, all of the Amazon original content. That That's cool. And that's that's free over the air stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that, that 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 is that is cool. I, I love hearing that. Um, I I wasn't anywhere that I could actually ever would have been able to take advantage of it, but it's nice for people that are actually stationed overseas to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, definitely. And when I was overseas, well, except for when I was in Japan, uh, or actually, let me let me reverse that. When I was living in Germany, I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of this because I didn't live on base. I was just living in a German house in a German town. Right. And uh, yeah, and that that wouldn't have helped me at all. Except I did get AFN, so I would have been able to watch the Amazon originals on AFN. Uh, so that aspect. Would but then, could you just stuff. VPN to the base and go from there? Like, because you know, no, I'm sure I, I'm sure I could have. I. Didn't care. I, I was doing a lot of torrents <laughs> back then, so I didn't really care. Yeah, see, I, I I was tent living, so it wasn't until I got back to the states that I actually had any creature comforts. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a different scenario. <laughs> um. Okay. So uh. So Malacca. Oh yes. Okay. All right. This is a this is a really cool thing for me. Speaking this, this, of Kickstarters, yeah. <laughs> so Kickstarters games and all other things. Yes. Oh man, this is just a great topic for this particular episode. Now, right, Malaka so, is a game that you you found out about at South by Southwest last year, right? Right, and that's what I was going to say. Here in about a month, we're going to be at South by Southwest, like almost exactly a month from now. 
and it was at South by Southwest 11 months ago that I met this guy named Edgar and he was a representative from a gaming develop a game development company called Lienzo and they were making a game called Mulaka that they were kickstarting and this is such a cool concept for a game because it's it's based on ancient Mexican tribes and it's basically adventure it's going to be a series eventually is their plan where each game focuses on a different a different tribe or like a different nation basically and their adventure like RPG style adventure games and it ties in the history of the people and all this stuff it's beautiful art it's just it's just a really cool thing and they were kickstarting it so i was a kickstarter backer for that game and unfortunately they didn't make their kickstarter goal so they had to find funding elsewhere and they've been trying for they could have used just help yeah, they, they they probably <laughs> they probably went like eight or nine months of of trying to find funding for this game, and they you know they were getting you know a little bit of pledge from this source, a little bit of pledge from this source, but finally they they got a a private backer that said, "Here you go, here's the funding that you need, make your game." And so it's 100 percent funded now. It's it's being developed like as we speak. They are working on it and. I couldn't be happier for them. Um, they announced this just a few, like three or four days ago, and now like all of all of their social media it, network is just blowing up about it. So it's it's really awesome, and we're gonna have probably Edgar and uh, maybe someone else from the company on our show here just in a couple weeks to talk about the game. So I'm really excited about that. So again, congratulations, guys! I know you guys watch this show, so good job. Can't wait to talk to you guys in person. See, or well on here. And hopefully, so, yeah. hopefully we find some more amazing things at uh, South by this year. Oh, dude, I'm so excited for South by Southwest. It's going to be such a great time. Have you ever been there, Jeff? I have not. It's uh, you know, have, have you have you been to Austin? I have not. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! That's even better than South by. Just the city of Austin. Texas. Yeah, yeah. South by is like the frosting on no, top of a I, delicious. I, I live cake in Austin. Austin. Minnesota. <laughs> well, <laughs> not not quite the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't comment on Austin. Do, Minnesota, do, does so Austin, Minnesota have a Sixth Street? <laughs> well, they yeah. Do. Well, <laughs> is that is that Sixth Street just a constant party all day? Uh, I'd have to think about where Sixth Street is. <laughs> there's, there's, a good, there's a good chance it could be a party neighborhood. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the one meth community in all of Austin, Minnesota. <laughs> like, damn it. Pro- pro- probably not the only one, no. <laughs> oh, man. So my, my fiance is a county attorney, a prosecutor. So probably not the only one, no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Look at, look at Jeff marrying up again. Um, but not again, but like, like I did, I just, yeah. Anyway, that was a common joke on my Facebook this last week. Yeah. Um, so Jeff, you've, you've recently gone through something that was a uh, pretty exciting. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just gave, no, oh, well, hey, that would have been way, I, I don't, I'm not sure this show is capable of handling that. Like, <laughs> no, um, I uh, was a co-runner. We started our own proto spiel in Minnesota, uh, and we just had our our first one, and um, it was a massive success as far as proto spiels, especially first years go. We had um, 142 people in the registration system, uh, four or five publishers that were there, a bunch of game designers, game testers, all that good stuff. So. Uh, that was cool, and we're definitely going to plan another one for next year. But for those that are unfamiliar with what Protospiel is, because I'm sure a lot of people have no idea. <laughs> I know Spiel um, means game. There you go. <laughs> uh, so good, good job, Pro- Kent. You Pro- get a cookie. <laughs> yeah. Pro- Protospiels are, and I've been attending a bunch of them myself for a while, and basically myself and, a, and another indie game designer here in Minnesota – uh, who's a good friend of mine. A lot of times we'll carpool to some of these other ones. And we were always running into like 30 or 40 people that were from Minnesota. So we just finally on our, on our drive back from one, we said, you know, it's, it's time for one for Minnesota to have one. And so we planned one. Uh, but what a proto spiel is, is it's an event. It's, it's usually a weekend. There are some minis that are, you know, a day here or there, but 
a, a full protospiel is usually a full weekend, three days of game designers, publishers, game reviewers, and people that just want to play and test games all come together uh, and test unpublished games. So I've played games from, I just had a great idea this morning. Uh, and it's like written on car, you know, and, uh, the game crafter usually supplies a nice prototype component table that's full of components that anybody can just take for free. So they got a lot of blank cards and, and bits and tokens and stuff. And you can just, if you have an idea or something you want to do on the spot, it's all there, grab it and go. Um, so I've, I've played everything from games that were, you know, thought of that morning that became pretty solid games by that evening to, uh, we're going to put this out on Kickstarter next week, next month. We're just looking for final feedback on, on what we've put together, the, the total package. So everything in between there. And it's what we like about it is all the creatives that come together and the amount of feedback and what we like to call focused feedback that you get over a three-day weekend equals six-plus months of trying to play test this out in the wild. Uh, because you've got other designers that know what you're looking for. Uh, because sometimes, you know, when you're out in the general public and you're kind of trying to play test a game, you know, somebody who's not used to giving feedback might just kind of go, yeah, that, that was cool. Or they might go, uh, my feedback is I really don't like purple. You know, uh, <laughs> where in this if, environment. If you're the guy you know, that doesn't like, like purple, screw you. <laughs> yeah, I love Purple is my favorite color, so screw non-purple lovers. <laughs> but in, in an environment like this, you're going to get a bunch of people sitting around and go, okay, you know, and you can either go, this is what I'm having trouble with, or somebody can go, you know, we were playing the game, this didn't seem to work. Have you thought about this, this, and this? And you get that that many people around that are in that thought process, and you, you not only do you get ideas that you can try, but you go, you know, I mean, I, I've gotten valuable feedback from people not playing my game. But sitting around in a feedback session, listening to other people talk about other people's games, because I'm like, I, I don't, I've never thought of that, you know. And why haven't I thought of that? And then that kind of gets you going. And I usually come away with like a two week designer high after I come off of this thing. I, I want to design everything. So it, that's what a protospiel is, and we also call it no pressure air, uh, uh, events because publishers can come, they can sit down and play a game. There's no pressure for them to say, are you going to sign this game? Will you, will you take this game? Will you publish it? They can sit down, play a game, give some feedback, stand up, walk away, go to another game. But every once in a while, games do get signed. Awesome. Awesome. Now, that sounds uh, really, really fun. And you, and there's another one coming up in Milwaukee that I just flashed on the screen. Um, yes, Milwaukee April, is in April. April 8th to the 10th. Yes, and I will be at that one for sure. So, I, I'm going to try to attend Milwaukee, and I'm going to try to att attend Madison for sure this year. O other than that, I'm not sure what other ones I'll be going to. Sounds pretty awesome. That, that sounds like something me and Kent could really, uh, really get into. Yep. You know, and, and they are all over the place, and we're always, and you know, we always encourage other people if there's not some in your area to kind of start one. They're pretty easy to kind of get off the ground. Uh, so almost all of the protospiel sites, you know, you you showed Milwaukee. Uh, ours is Minnesota, but at the at the bottom of like our site, we list the ones that we're aware of, so that you you know if, if you see one that's in your area, you can click over to their site and find out where you know what they're planning for this year, all that good stuff. It's very cool. Cool, uh, and we'll have links to all of this stuff in the show notes. Yep, yep, yep. yep. But uh, but the uh, overall the the icing on the cake for us was this was awesome. Um, like I said, we had 142 people register, uh, that are in our registration system. We, uh, took the record for first year attendance and we were within shooting distance of the overall record so far for people attending a produce spiel for our first year. So that was awesome. Nice. 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 Now, well, congratulations on that. Under the, uh, under the business side of it, is that something that you pretty much just break even on? Is that, is that a passion project you're dumping a bunch of money into or? Um, it, it's a passion project myself and, and Matt Warden from Matt Warden Games uh, put on, but we planned it smart. Um, there, we, we actually do have padding for next year. So next year we are actually looking at, because we have some extra padding left over from this year, looking at 
potentially a bigger space because uh, Saturday at the height of our event, we were perfect. Like there, all the tables were full, but nobody was standing around waiting for anything either. So we just hit that, that perfect spot um, at the height of everything going on Saturday, which, you know, is the biggest day. That's when most people attend. So we, we hit it, but we're thinking, you know, next year, we might want to look at a slightly bigger space. So luckily we got, we had some leftover money from this year. So again, it was, we, we planned it. We actually went into this. We had a smaller space. We were like, we don't know. What are we going to do? We were trying, we were playing it very conservative. Um, I actually, you know, uh, Matt was trying to maintain a, a tight, tight budget. So, you know, at first we were, weren't going to have like coffee service and all that kind of thing. And, and he's like, no, if, if we get enough people, then we'll think about it. I'm like, you know what? Um, this isn't my first rodeo because I used to run a gaming convention. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I, can, I can talk to some people. We'll get sponsors. So we had daily sponsors for the coffee, and we had the uh, uh, sponsor that, that gave us hot chocolate all weekend long and stuff like that. And, and so we, we made it into this nice little event. So we, we planned it smart. We definitely went into it knowing we should break even, but we should get more, and we did get more. So, right so look, looking at this Milwaukee one, it looks like it's uh, basically five dollars to get in the door and play the games, and forty dollars to show off your game for all three days. So, it's not even like an expensive thing for uh, for game designers or players. It, it sounds really cool. Yeah, it's it's definitely, and, and that's one of the things we try to encourage. I mean, uh, we've got to pay for the space somehow, and, and of course, the people that get the biggest benefit out of the space are the designers who get to bring their ta- uh, games to the table. So, yeah, they, they pay a little bit more for the, that privilege. Uh, and then testers, we just inc- want to encourage testers. So we did the same thing. Like our our uh, uh, pre-reg was 5 bucks, and then at the door it was 10 bucks. So it was still like 10 bucks for the entire weekend if you showed up at the door to play as many games as you wanted. So can't you, you, uh, you could take the boys and Stephanie for a $20 bill and have a good time all weekend long. Yeah, no doubt. That sounds pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Yep. Hell yeah. All right. So, uh, so unless I missed something in the, uh, in the show notes, that's about it for today. Yeah. I, th- I think that's pretty much our show. So Jeff, why don't you tell us about all us geeks and what you're doing over there and, and, uh, give it, I mean, we got plenty of time. So, so let us know what you're <laughs> doing over there, man. Oh, well, I'm not going to hopefully go on too long. Uh, so, uh, United Geeks Network is the network that I run. Uh, and that's an online media network where we have bloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, uh, the whole the whole gamut. And so you can find that at unitedgeeksnetwork.com. Uh, and All Us Geeks is my main and flagship uh, podcast, and that's the podcast that started helped start off and kick off the network. And All Us Geeks, we call it all things geek-related. So we talk Kickstarter, uh, movies, TV, comics, all the, what we're reading, watching, playing. But our main episodes always have a core focus around we review at least one tabletop game an episode. Uh, and then uh, the Kickstarter stuff, like I was talking about before, that's actually standalone stuff where um, I interview people that are on Kickstarter or about to be on Kickstarter or have something to do, like offer services that might help out people on Kickstarter. Uh, and we just kind of either get to know them, get to know their projects, but I also like to get what lessons they've learned about the Kickstarter process. And we share that with our audience. So that's all us geeks. And I have two other podcasts, two bald geeks and the game crafter official podcast, uh, that I do as well. So two bald geeks, man, what could that possibly be about? Two bald geeks is the best named (laughs) podcast ever. It's all right there in the name. It is myself and another game reviewer who have decided we need to do a podcast that has nothing to do with games. It is a horror movie review podcast. It's all in the name, people. Two bald geeks, horror movie review podcast. I don't know how you could miss it. I'm guessing he's bald as well. He is, yes. Uh, it, it, some, it would it some, would be amazing somebody, if he had like a whole like a, like a fro. <laughs> yeah. it, it was it was kind of funny because somebody at Protospiel who had again he's a he's a pretty well known reviewer as well in the in the in the game review space. So somebody at Protospiel was asking me, you know, what is, I've never met Cyrus. What does he look like? And I'm like, you know what I look like? He's like, yeah, uh, like me, but skinnier. And the, then the, the guy came up to me after Cyrus showed up and he's like, oh my God, that was the perfect description. Of Cyrus. <laughs> I'm like, I told you. 
<laughs> so, but yeah, we're we're both game reviewers. We already have our our main focus around that. So the two ball geeks, the horror movie thing, is a passion project for the two of us. We wanted to do something one to make sure we always talk because we're really good friends, but uh, to basically review uh, a horror movie, the Ginger Dead Man. I would love to review that. Uh, I actually own that one. Um, the thing we have to, if it's on Netflix, we can review it. Cause now that Cyrus has moved farther away, um, I can, I, we have to rely on Netflix now. And of course I, I'm talking here, but I'm, I'm talking to big boy 420 there that responded in the chat. So, <laughs> and, uh, so yeah. you, you got one more, one other podcast, the game crafter official podcast. So like earlier, we talked about the game crafter. Um, I've been, I said 19, I've, I've been involved with them since like 2009. Um, and the, again, the game crafters, the print on demand company we talked about earlier, I've been a part of their community almost from the beginning. Um, I met these guys at, at a couple local conventions. Uh, I got involved in their website. I do chat moderation over there and they have such an awesome community that I just kind of stuck around. Uh, and myself and JT, one of the owners of the Game Crafter, do their official weekly podcast. So we talk about things related to the Game Crafter and what the community wants us to talk about. We, we're we fortunate enough to get a lot of listener requests. So lately we've been on a uh, let's talk about what listeners want to hear about thing and, and we don't have to come up with our own episode, which is good because I keep threatening that if we run out of listener requests, we're going to do uh podcasting pants or no pants and so far everybody's made sure we don't do that episode <laughs> that's uh great. pants off dance off baby <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah we, we we do all our shows from the uh from the nipple up so it wouldn't really matter here <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Typically, <laughs> i'm just saying don't knock it till you try it jt <laughs> Oh, so wrong, so wrong. All right, Ken, what you got, man? What, what's going on here? All right, so last week I I talked a little bit about uh, a guy I'm a big fan of, Dante Bosco, and how I'm kind of trying to woo him on social media so that he will notice me and and agree to be a guest on this show. Uh, his Twitter handle is at Dante Bosco, D-A-N-T-E-B-A-S-C-O. If you see me tweeting to him or or d- d- any anything involving him, I would pre- appreciate any likes or retweets that you can give because the more time that my name pops up on his Twitter feed, the better I think. Um, but yeah, um, that's about it. If you if you want to follow me, you can go to at ritual or I'm sorry at rm underscore del noche. That's the RM stands for ritual misery. I got confused there for a second. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've been pretty active on there actually for the last few weeks. So um, come join the party. Uh, follow me there. Or if you're a beer guy like me, you can go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche. Excellent. Jeff, what you got going on? Where can people find you? Um, we decided to get extremely clever and make it hard to find us. So if you look at all us geeks pretty much anywhere, you'll probably find us. <laughs> So <laughs> and again, if you want to know more about just the the uh, the network in general, that's United Geeks Cat United Geeks Network dot com, uh, and that's uh, all the members are listed there, and you can kind of click over to their individual sites, and it's an aggr- aggregated feed of everybody in the network as well. So excellent. So uh, so Twitter at all us geeks uh, all geeks dot com and the. Uh... Facebook, all us geeks. I mean, you know, me, Instagram, was... all us geeks. Wherever you want to find it. If you put in all us geeks and if we're not there, let me know because I'll get there probably if you need us to be there. Do, do you have a MySpace but, page? Um, not anymore. We do. We, we can't just go <laughs> us one. We, like, we have a MySpace page. Like, I don't know how it happened, but we have, <laughs> we have a MySpace page. Like, yes. <laughs> yes, I forgot all about that. I, I created that thing like a month, month and a half ago or something. And I meant to like pimp it completely out. It was going to be this hilarious thing, and then I forgot all about it. I don't, I don't think there's anything there yet. <laughs> they they still let you like do all the nineteen uh, nineties web graphic animation, pimp out uh, your profile. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I I think I can even I can even put my top five. Remember that? Remember top when that four. was a thing? Top, yes. is, is top four eight, uh, twelve, or sixteen or twenty? So, yeah, some shit. Because yeah. it had it had to be, you know, they they forced their stuff to be in the nice little columns, but you could put your shit anywhere yep. in there. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And, well, and Tom was always your number one friend. Well, and, until you unfriended him, which until you unfriended him, right? Which, which means nobody found you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, of course, you can go to go to find all the all the stuff we've been talking about tonight. We keep track of all the stuff, and it'll all be in richmisery dot com, uh, and it, it'll be there, man. It, like it's it's just there. It's like automatically. It's not. <laughs> Um, so you can follow me at Ethan Kane on Twitter. That's pretty much my primary presence. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I, I like the Twitter. I like, I like it the way it is. Twitter. Don't change. Don't change. Yes. Twitter. Twitter. Oh my God. Don't change. Yes. I don't like all this talk. <laughs> Twitter stay like you. It's bad enough that you change favorites into likes. Just that's, that should be the final change. Keep it as it is. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't be Facebook light. Don't don't do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Bullshit. So um, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Put a, put all of our shows in there and uh, and when they go live and all that kind of stuff. Submit ideas on our subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. If you put it in there, we'll probably talk about it. Uh, like I, I don't I, I can't think of anything other than child porn that we won't talk about. And if we if we probably just talk about you if you put that in there. We'll just probably just bag on you. So there's yeah. that. Uh, you can email us, podcast at ritualmisery.com. Call and leave us a voicemail, 567-69-TRMPC. That's 567-698-7672. There we go. I hit the little music thing. Of course, you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for Jeff, and for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Thanks a lot, guys. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs>